Hello and welcome back. Now that we've got a little bit of coating under our belt, got, got our hands dirty a little bit, we're going to learn about some of the foundational aspects of Swift. Today we're going to talk about primitive data types. Now when you hear the word primitive, what do you think? Personally, I think of kind of like cavemen type stuff, drawing on walls and eating dinosaurs and hitting things over the head with wooden clubs like Bam Bam. Um, and the word pretty much means the same thing. Really what it means is simple, is less complex, is less advanced. And that's really what these, type, these data types are. In Swift, there are tons of different data types that can be extremely complex depending on how you want to structure them. But they all kind of boil down to a few different types of primitive data types. These are the five basic primitive data types. You've got integers, you have floats, doubles, strings, and booleans. So to give you some examples, integers are whole numbers. One, four, negative two, all this stuff. All the way up to seven digits of whole numbers. No decimals, no fractions, anything like that. Floats are pretty much the same thing except they are decimals. They are numbers that have fractional values on the end. So they can be both positive or negative, but they just have fractions. Doubles are floats but they have a lot more room in memory for them. They're for super long numbers or to a whole bunch of different decimal places. You probably won't use doubles hardly ever. Strings, most people think of them as words. Um, and Booleans is either gonna be true or false. So we go a little bit more in depth. Integer, you have the keyword for integers, int, I-N-T with a capital I. These are only whole numbers. I cannot stress that enough, only whole numbers. You can get up to seven digits, and they can be positive or negative, doesn't matter. They're still classified as integers. Floats, as I mentioned, are decimals. You can get up to seven digits. Notice it's seven digits, so it could be 1.123456, 1, and that's as far as you can go. If you do more than that, it's going to round off. Um, and they can be both positive or negative. Doubles, the same thing. You can get up to 15 digits on those, but you only need to use them whenever it's absolutely necessary because they take up a lot more room in memory, and they take... Um, longer to run whenever you're compiling your program than integers or, or floats do. So only use doubles when it's absolutely necessary. For example, you might be doing some very, very complex processing for some scientific huh? application or something. Strings, um, you put strings inside of double quotes whenever you're making them. Um, strings are usually letters or words or phrases. They can contain numbers, but they can't, you can't do any math on them, they're not numbers, they are strings, it's a, it's, a, it's a data type, but most people think of them as words and phrases. And Booleans, there's only two values, two possible values to Booleans, there's true or there's false. We'll talk more about them in depth in one of the later lessons when we kind of dive into the principles and the, and the ideas behind computers in general, but for as far as programming goes, true or false. And whenever you're writing true or false, it's uh, lowercase and there's no quotes around them. Now that we've got all those data types under our belt, even if, you don't, if you're don't, if not 100% on them yet, that's fine. You're gonna use them so much they're gonna become second nature, I promise. But how those are stored in a computer are either as constants or variables. Think of constants or variables as kind of like a box that has that data inside of it. This is the kind of data, booleans or strings or doubles, and constants and variables are the box that holds them. So the first box that can contain some data is called a constant. Constants use the keyword let whenever you're creating them, so let my constant equal four, whatever. Constants cannot change. They physically cannot be changed. It's not that you shouldn't, it's not that I wouldn't, it's not that it's a bad idea, it's, a, it's that they cannot. If you try and change a constant, it will crash your program and nothing will run. Constants cannot change, ever. Forever, ever. If you need something to change, use a variable. Keyword var, these can be changed. You use these for any type of data that you need to be updated throughout the day or th updated throughout the program. You might use it for, um, in games a lot of times it's used for the, the, char the main character's name, the player's name, where um, if, like for example, you're playing Fallout and somebody's one of the characters talking to you, they use your name in the code on the back end, everything of that is a constant except for your name, which is a variable, because you put your name at the beginning of the game and then it's probably called player name or something like that, and every time they code it, they want that player name, they put player name in the code, and it will just plug in whatever that information is, but it can't be a constant, but be because every single time you play it, you might name your character something different. Every single different version of the game is going to have a different character name, so that's why they, use, they would use a variable for that. So for an example, here's your keyword, you have the name of your constant, 
the type, and then what it's equal to. So this is the syntax for creating a constant. Let my const, and again, my const, this whole thing here, is, can be anything you want. You can name your variables and your constants anything you like under the sun. You have a colon, and then the type, and then you have number three. So this is a constant integer. So after I run this, my const is equal to three. Now notice, on this line, I'm trying to change my const to five, and it throws an error. You cannot change constants. This will not run. If I tried to e execute this in Xcode or in any other program, it will crash, and it'll say, you can't. Sorry, not going to happen. Use var instead if you need to change it. Down here, I have a new variable, var, my var, and it's a Boolean. You can tell from the colon here, and then the type equals true. This is a variable Boolean. Now, I can also set it to false. My var equals false. Changes it to false, and I can um, try to change it. My var equals 29, but that will throw an error because the type is Boolean. You have to have your value match your type. If it's bool, you can only be true or false. It cannot be 29. If it's an int, it can only be a number, a whole number. It can't be 3.14. It can't be 94.2. It can't be the word dog. It can't be true, it can't be false, it can only be a whole number. So make sure your, your types have to match. Here's some more examples, but one thing I want to point out is that you can concatenate strings together. My combined string, my string plus my other string, and it just sticks them together. One thing to notice that is very important, whenever you have numbers that are strings, notice these are numbers, but they're inside of quotes, so they're considered strings. You cannot perform math on them. I've already said this a couple times, and I'm going to say it again because it's very important. You can't do any math on them because they are considered words. They are considered strings. So whenever you try and add them together, it just shows them together. Five, one, two. Just puts them right down next to each other. Keep that in mind. So just to review real quick, we learned about the five basic primitive data types. We learned about integers, which are whole numbers, floats, which are decimal numbers, doubles, which are really long numbers, oftentimes decimals, and really you're not going to use those much. Strings, which are basically words, but they can also have numbers. The important part is that they're inside quotes and you can't perform any type of math on them. Um, and booleans, which are either true or false. Booleans will be very important later. They seem very simple, and they are simple, but they're also very important. We also learned about the two types of boxes that hold data types, constants and variables. The difference between them is that constants cannot change, while variables can change as much as you like, as long as you use the same data type that they have when they're initialized. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.